Chapter 2, Jesus and Prayer How did Jesus maintain the sense of the Father's nearness and feed the life of love and devotion? By prayer. He often dealt with the subject of prayer in his teaching. He set forth the conditions of true and efficient prayer in detail and explicitness. Purity of heart was essential, he said, for that vision of God, without which prayer would be flat and impotent. Matthew 5.8 John Bunyan felt this deeply, and it was his sense of it which shaped all that he wrote. For as much, he says in Grace Abounding, as the passage was wonderful, narrow, even so narrow that I could not but with great difficulty enter in thereat, it showed me that none could enter into life but those that were in downright earnest, and unless also they left this wicked world behind them. For there was only room for body and soul, but not for body and soul and sin. Jesus taught that prayer was not a place where willful impurity could obtrude. Restitution and reparation for wrongdoing, forgiveness of heart, faith, unity of desire with others, honest longing, sincere humility. These were conditions of such true prayer as he knew the Father was waiting to answer. He suggested some of the things for which men should pray, our enemies, laborers for the harvest, against temptation. But he left room for us to ask for whatsoever we may rightly desire and can ask for in faith and in his name. As to the manner and spirit of prayer, he encouraged simplicity, secrecy, constancy, vigilance. And he held out great encouragements, the assurance that God's love exceeds in earthly fathers, that Jesus himself will join in our prayers, that our Father knows our wants already and loves us. And what Jesus taught about prayer, he exemplified in his life. It was a life marked by prayer as one of its most real and natural experiences. There was nothing forced or artificial about Jesus' prayer life. The Father was very near to him, and he just talked to him. He thanked the Father quite openly for his present help and goodness and common things, and the deep gratitude of his soul in great and strange things was expressed in the same open, unhesitating way. Jesus was never ashamed of God, nor hesitated to confess him openly. The loneliness of Jesus showed itself in the loneliness of his prayer, but his love of the Father showed itself in his eagerness to be alone with him. He began his day with God, and so he continued and ended them. When first thy eyes unveil, give thy soul leave to do the like. Our bodies but forerun the Spirit's duty. True hearts spread and heave unto their God as flowers do the sun. Give him thy first thoughts then, so shalt thou keep him company all day, and in him sleep. For our understanding of Jesus' time habits and prayer, see Mark chapter 1, verse 35, chapter 6, verses 45 to 47, Luke chapter 6, verse 12. And for understanding Jesus' place habits, see John chapter 18, verse 2 and Luke chapter 5, verse 16, also chapter 6, verse 12. If he bade men to pray always and not to faint, that was what he did himself. He prepared for the great events of his life by prayer. He knew, as Mazzini has said, that the morrow of victory is more perilous than its eve, and he followed the great events of his life by prayer. He was praying each time he heard from home. Prayer was his very breath, unselfish prayer, forgiving prayer, earnest prayer, submissive prayer. If there was ever a man who did not need to pray, it was Jesus. What did he lack for which he needed to ask? Was not the Father always with him? If he needed to pray, much more do we. The characteristics of his prayer life, as we have found them, must be the characteristics of ours. References For the conditions of true prayer, Jesus mentions restitution and reparation for wrongdoing in Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. 
forgiveness of heart in Matthew chapter 6 verses 12 to 15, faith in Matthew chapter 17 verse 20, unity of desire with others in Matthew chapter 18 verses 19 and 20, honest longing in Luke chapter 11 verse 5 to 8, sincere humility in Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 14. For what we should pray for, Jesus mentions praying for our enemies in Matthew chapter 5 verses 43 to 48, laborers for the harvest in Matthew chapter 9 verses 37 and 38, against temptation in Matthew chapter 26 verse 41, what we rightly desire and can ask for in faith in Matthew chapter 21 verse 22, and to pray for things in Jesus' own name in John chapter 14 verses 13 and 14. As to the manner and spirit of prayer, Jesus mentions simplicity in Matthew chapter 6 verses 7 and 8, secrecy in Matthew chapter 7 verses 5 and 6, constancy in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, and vigilance in Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. Jesus encourages prayer in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 and 8. He assures us that God's love exceeds in earthly fathers in Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 and 11. That Jesus himself will join us in our prayers in Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. Also in John chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. And that God knows our wants already and loves us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Jesus thanked the Father for his goodness and common things in Matthew chapter 15, verse 36 and Luke chapter 9, verse 16. And he expressed his gratitude in great and strange things in Matthew chapter 11 verses 25 and 26 and John chapter 12 verse 27. He prepared for the great events of his life in Matthew chapter 14 verses 23 to 33, Luke 6, 12 to 13, and also Luke 9 verses 18 to 20. He followed the great events of his life by prayer in Matthew chapter 14 verse 23, Mark chapter 1 verses 32 and 35, and Luke chapter 3 verse 22. He prayed each time he heard from home in Luke chapter 3 verse 22, Matthew 17 5, John 12 28, and Luke 22 43. His prayer was unselfish, Luke 22 verse 32, forgiving in Luke 23 verse 34, earnest in Luke 22 verse 44, and submissive in Matthew 11:26 and 26 verse 39 to 54.